We're gonna diagram this out one last time and end with our learning outcomes. So this diagram here, as you can see by the title, is about changes in volume. So our homeostatic variable thing that we're regulating is ECF volume. And let's start with a decrease in volume. That's what we just diagrammed. So nothing new here. We've got stimulus is decreased volume. Our receptors are going to be barrel receptors, which trigger the sympathetic nervous system, as well as our kidneys. Our kidneys are gonna have an endocrine response. Our sympathetic nervous system is going to target the heart and blood vessels to cause cardiac output increase and total peripheral resistance. Um, we're gonna actually cross that one out. Our kidneys are going to release renin to trigger angiotensin. That's gonna have effects, angiotensin is. Uh, we're gonna have it affect ADH for water reabsorption. We're going to have angiotensin trigger aldosterone for sodium reabsorption and then water as well. Two different mechanisms. We're also having increased thirst. These variables are going to restore blood volume by increasing volume. With a increase in volume, do you remember what that triggers? Natriuretic peptides. So the atria contains ANP, which is gonna be released and target our kidneys, adrenal glands, blood vessels. So adrenal gland, blood vessels is what I said down there. So let's use that same abbreviation and kidney. These are our targets. The effects that are gonna restore um, our homeostasis is increased sodium loss through regulation of that decreased aldosterone as well as increased GFR. Um, so there's two different mechanisms for that. That's going to result in increased water loss and vasodilation. Why? Because we had increased blood pressure. That's going to restore our normal blood pressure through restoring blood volume. All right, let's now look at a similar image What's this about? This is about regulating sodium levels. As you can see from the title here. So that's gonna be our um, homeostatic. Let's see, did I, did I do that right? Yes, I did. Okay, so now we've got sodium concentration in the ECF. So if we go low, that's our stimulus. We're going to have a receptor, receptors which are osmoreceptors, where in our hypothalamus, we have then decreased ADH. This is going to decrease thirst also affect the kidney, the collecting duct, to increase water loss, decrease water reabsorption. Both of these mechanisms is going to um, decrease the water volume, thereby increasing osmolarity relative sodium concentration. So we have restored our 
sodium levels, in part by altering water volume. I would like you to diagram the increased sodium, which is going to then restore um, a decreased sodium level. And I think you've got everything you need to do that. So the change in sodium is compensated in part by a change in volume. This is learning check 10, by the way, that you're doing for that. Okay, learning checks or learning outcomes here, a bunch. I've had quite a few videos here um, in a row without these. So this one actually came up a, a bit ago, those hypothalamic osmoreceptors um, that detect osmolarity. This is gonna be a part of many of these other ones. So fluid volume and osmolarity is two separate variables that are related to each other. So how they're related. Um, blood pressure related to blood volume. And then this is gonna be related to both dehydration and hemorrhage. And then cardiovascular, endocrine and urinary systems in monitoring and responding to blood volume and or pressure. Okay, last learning check. Two kind of word dumps. One related to fluid volume regulation in the kidneys. Name as many hormones as you can. So without looking, right? This is a, a word, a word dump trying to recall those hormones um, that I talked about in this video, either that affect the kidney or are produced by the kidney. And then please one specific question. 